when Chelsea are playing, don't blink, don't adjust your TV set, don't look away, maybe don't even breathe, because there is never a dull moment supporting this team. We have just run out 4-2 winners over Leicester at Stamford Bridge to reach the semi-finals of the FA Cup. Another trip to Wembley lies in store for us. But I've got to be honest, Pochettino has absolutely gotten away with one there, hasn't he? Raheem Sterling has put on one of the worst horror show performances I have ever seen. And off the back of that, as good as it feels, things need to change right now. Right, so here's how we lined up. Starting off, Robert Sanchez bought in for Petrovic, a decision that, listen... Everyone that watches the channel knows my thoughts. And you know what? Even if you don't watch the channel, you're still probably going to know my thoughts on this. Robert Sanchez cannot lace Petrovic's boots. I was not happy seeing that. But apart from that, I was fairly happy with the rest of the team. You know, the back line sort of picked itself at this moment in time. Caicedo and Gallagher, we always knew would be the pivot. We haven't really got any options there. What with Romeo Lavia still being injured, Ugochukwu still being injured, and Enzo Fernandez serving a ban in this game. And obviously, I was very, very happy to see Mikhailo Mudrik brought back in in that number 10 role where I feel he's been doing a lot better recently. Palmer and Jackson, they're always going to be in the team. And the one player that I did not agree with being in here today was Raheem Sterling. Very, very easy to say that after the match and after you see the way it's unfolded. But all you've got to do is go back on my videos and look at our predicted lineups before the match started. But let's get into the actual match. Well, about five minutes in, we win a corner. Uh, the ball's whipped in from Mudrik. Palmer nearly scores one of the most unlikely goals of the season after getting a bit of a mid-air back heel um, on the ball. It hits the post and eventually Leicester clear it. Now, was this even a shot? I'm not sure. I think what Palmer's doing there is what you'll see a lot of top players do in terms of guiding the ball into an area where you're pretty confident that maybe it might end up troubling the keeper, might end up going in, being on target. But also, even if it's not, any sort of touch, whether that comes from a Chelsea player or a Leicester player, any sort of touch can put it into the back of the net. We didn't score, but it didn't take us too long after that. 13 minutes in Chelsea break down the right-hand side, which, let's be honest, it's not only a pattern of this match, it's a pattern of our season, because when you've got a man like Melo Gusto in the sort of form that he is in right now, you can't help but end up seeing most of your creativity, most of your good play come down that side. We break down that side, but people, before we get into all that, as you may well know, I have got a fight coming up next weekend against Baby Hulk, and not only do I want to box beautifully, I want to groom beautifully, and the people helping me do that are today's video sponsors manscaped and don't just take my word for it manscaped is trusted by 10 million men worldwide so if you want to have a look at what manscaped can do for you hit the link in the description to this video and when you're buying your products and you're at the checkout use my promo code joey knight all capitals and that will get you 20 percent off as well as that it'll also get you free shipping. So let me run you through a few of the key items in the Performance Package 5.0, starting off with my personal favourite, the Lawn Mower 5.0. This is Manscaped's fifth generation trim up featuring two interchangeable next-gen skin-safe blade heads. A standard one for taking a little bit off the top and a new fall blade to go smooth wherever your heart desires. It's also got two LED spotlights, meaning you will not miss a spot in any of those dark places. It comes in a smart, compact, case meaning you can take it to travel with you and not only that it is waterproof in the bath in the shower maybe at the local swimming bars probably a little bit weird but you get the point you can use it anywhere also included in the performance package is the beard hedger pro kit and handyman shaver because i know what's been playing on your mind you've been watching my content and you like the chelsea stuff but the main reason you watch it is for the grooming you look at the little bit of hair on the chin and you think how to get it so smooth on the sides well my friends that is all down to the Beard Hedger Pro. So a massive thank you to the guys over at Manscaped once again for supporting the channel. Make sure you head over to their website. It's linked in the description. And when you filled your basket, make sure you put in my promo code Joey Knight, all capitals, and that'll get you 20% off and free shipping. Let's get into the video. Nicholas Jackson picks up the ball. Um, he runs at the Leicester defender. Who was it? Vestergaard, wasn't it? 
runs at Vestergaard. Vestergaard does pretty fucking shit there, to be honest. But then Nicholas Jackson does pretty well. So he turns him, or at least he gets it on the outside of him. Um, he drills the ball across the face of goal. And a player that I've been a big advocate for recently in the past, not so much so, but definitely in the last sort of six months or so, Mark Kukurea. He arrives, um, taps into an open net, scores his first goal for Chelsea, opens his account first of many, surely. Nah, probably not many, but you know. I'm happy with Kukurea there. Then a few minutes later, Chelsea have the chance early on to pretty much dead off the game. We win a penalty. It's a stonewall penalty, but some could say it's actually quite a fortunate one because as the ball breaks down the right-hand side, once again, as it had been, um, in the box, ends up finding Raheem Sterling. Raheem Sterling ends up managing to let the ball pretty much get away from him. And obviously, he was still in control of it, but the first touch wasn't good, was it? So what I'm saying is when he gets clattered from behind, some could look at that and say, a little bit lucky, to be honest, because I don't think Raheem Sterling was going to do anything with the ball there. Raheem Sterling, right placed at the right time to miscontrol the ball, but still win a penalty. And then we know what time it is, you know? We have got Cole Palmer on the pitch, five out of his last five in terms of penalties, um, and Raheem Sterling has, has missed a few and, you know, he's not he's not going to even attempt to take it off Cole Palmer. Cole Palmer picks it up. He does attempt to take it off Cole Palmer. And you know what, right? Remember at the start of the season when we heard Raheem Sterling say that he wanted to be Chelsea's top goal scorer this season? I took that as a positive. I honestly did. I looked at that and I thought, oh, yeah, good on you. That shows good mentality. It means you're thriving to greater things. And that quote from Raheem Sterling, those comments about wanting to be Chelsea's top goal scorer have aged like fucking milk. Because now what we're seeing is, yeah, he wants to be Chelsea's top goal scorer, but he don't mind if that's the top goal scorer in a relegated Chelsea team. It's all about him. It's all about Raheem Sterling here. He wants to be the main man. He wants the headlines. So much so that he takes the ball off of a penalty taker. Do you know what? Regardless, fuck being a penalty taker. Just off of a player that is so much better than him. But regardless of that, off of a penalty taker who we see no flaws in yet. Cole Palmer has done nothing wrong from the spot yet. Every time he gets it, he converts it. There's no logical reason to take that ball off him. No logical reason whatsoever. Other than, oh, I've been playing a bit of shit and my ego's a bit dented, so I think I'm going to have to score this penalty, which, let's be honest, who don't score penalties, clearly Raheem Sterling, just to get a little bit of an ego boost. Wanting what is well for me and what is right for me rather than wanting what is right for the team. Raheem Sterling steps up to take it. He misses the penalty. Pathetic penalty. Hardly even to one side. Pretty much straight at the goalkeeper. Absolutely awful. And at that point, honestly, I'm thinking, mate, do you know what? I'd sub him off. I'd sub him off for that. We don't. Um, Caicedo, a couple of minutes later, picks up the ball. Threads it through. Raheem Sterling, perfect chance for redemption, to redeem himself and to let us go, OK, you know, you shouldn't have done that. Very, very immature, especially when you look at the age of our squad and realise that you, my friend, on 325 grand a week, are supposed to be one of the more responsible ones. But we'll let you off because you're through one of them with a goalkeeper. You're about to score. What's he do? He fucking misses it. 325 grand a week, this fella's on. Absolutely awful absolutely awful um he misses a one-on-one -on -one with a goalkeeper pathetic absolutely pathetic cannot believe that really 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 can't believe that so the halftime whistle is about to go i'm absolutely desperate for sterling to get tugged at half time um he definitely 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 needs to be subbed off and as i'm saying that he does produce a little moment of class. Um, he wins. The ball comes in from a throw-in. He sort of jumps up for a header. When do you ever see Sterling win a header? And he puts a good amount of weight on it in terms of putting the ball into the position that he can actually run onto it. He does run onto it down the left-hand side. Cole Palmer's arriving into the box. Really, really good work from Cole Palmer. Has to drive across. Scores a tap-in. Assisted by Raheem Sterling. Is it a little bit of redemption or, you know, if you throw enough shit at the wall, will something eventually stick? I don't know. Halftime goes. And you know what? At halftime, I'm sort of looking at this and I'm thinking, right, all I want to see in the second half is the match stay the way it is. Because 
This game was very, very open, and Leicester weren't really massively threatening until this point. Robert Sanchez having a few shaky moments when he was closed down, but Leicester didn't look prolific by any uh, any stretch of the imagination. And I felt that because the match was so spread open and was so wide, if it carried on in that trend, it was going to benefit Chelsea because we know that this Chelsea side had a very good attacking, maybe not as clinical as we'd like to be, but if you come to play, you know, if you come to have a shootout with us, especially if you're championship opposition, man, we're going to get the better of you. And we did today, but I don't know. Could have been better, man. Could have been better. 50 minutes in, Axel de Sassi scores an absolute worldie of an own goal. Awful. Absolutely awful. And what's going on with Axel de Sassi as well, man? You know, I thought he had turned such a corner after that performance at the Etihad against Man City. He was getting heads, feet, body on everything and anything, clearing everything out of the box. He was heroic in that match, really, really good. And then since then, his standards have slipped a lot. And today, again, um, really, really bad on goal there. The ball comes in from a throw in. Axel de Sassi absolutely scuffs it. At the same time, putting way too much weight on the pass back to the keeper. And this one's de Sassi's fault. I understand that. But as Robert Sanchez runs over to console him with a little kiss on the cheek, oh, don't worry, I just couldn't help but thinking, hold on, mate, your hands ain't fucking clean here either. Because the positioning of, of Robert Sanchez was awful. He's literally... Oh, mate. I've got to ask you the question. When you see the positioning of Robert Sanchez um, for that own goal, is that an own goal if Petrovic is there? It's not, is it? It's not. Because Petrovic is positioned better. Robert Sanchez, mate, what is going on with you? 62nd minute, Chelsea concede again. This time, Mavadidi picks up the ball in the left wing. Gusto jockeys him back, but at the most important time, Gusto does lose his composure a little bit here. A um, couple of step overs by uh, Mavadidi, just literally wrong foots, Malo Gusto. And then he curls a beauty into the right hand corner. Again, if I'm being super critical, Petrovic would have got there to that. I honestly do think he would have, um, but Robert Sanchez didn't. It was at a good height for a goalkeeper, just sort of middle of the goal, weren't it? In, in terms of in terms of height, not in the middle of the goal, it was in the far corner. But yeah, can't help but feel that Petrovic would have got there for that one. Why is he not on the pitch? I really don't know. We'll speak about that in a bit. Chelsea are looking pretty shaky at this point, you know, and Leicester trouble us a f again a few times um, around this this part of the match, but then 70 minutes in, we think we've won a penalty. Nicholas Jackson with, again, what's fast becoming a signature move of his, isn't it? That little flick round the side and then either running onto it or putting it off to another player so then he can continue his run. This one, he didn't have anyone there to support him, so ball comes, he flicks it round uh, Callum Doyle, I think it was, the Leicester defender, runs onto it, running through on goal, taken down from behind, Stonewall penalty, very clear and obvious, um, and for me, Doyle's got to go. He's got to have his marching orders there. He gets a yellow. Weird. Very weird. They then VAR it. He gets a red. Good. Very good. They then go, oh, hold on. No, the fucking foul was committed outside the box. So we get a free kick, not a penalty. I'd have rather had the yellow and a penalty at that stage. But yeah, either way, I did look at it after. Probably a fair decision. Probably was outside the box. So can't argue too much with it. Um, but do you know what? I'm looking at it and I'm thinking... It couldn't be any closer to being a penalty without being a penalty. This free kick is on the edge of the box here. I get we've seen Sterling score a free kick against Newcastle this season. We've also seen him miss a couple. Um, mixed bag for him. But I'm looking at it and I'm thinking Cole Palmer should be hitting this. And also, if I'm Cole Palmer, I'm looking at this thinking, yeah, you might have took the penalty off me, mate, but you're having a fucking shocker here. You're not taking this free kick. Raheem Sterling, of course, takes it. One of the worst free kicks I have ever seen in my entire life. Horror show. That is the only thing you can describe this match. I don't care. He got an assist. I really don't care. Fucking awful from Sterling in this match. Absolutely awful. Um, he thought he was playing rugby here. Absolutely dire. Do you know what? As much as you can commend a man for not allowing the bad moments he's having a game to dictate whether or not he has a bad game going forward from that point... You've also just got to look at it and go, mate, you have had a fucking shocker here. And he should have been pulled, man. He should have been pulled. 77 minutes. The ball goes up. Substitution. 
Carnage Chukameka, who is somewhat of a favourite amongst the fans. You know, he gets a very good reception normally. Um, he's about to be subbed on. Clearly, it's going to be Sterling coming off. He's having a fucking shocker. And something very, very telling happens here. And you can't underplay this. You shouldn't underplay this. The stadium erupts with boos from the fans because they see Mikhailo Mudrix being brought off instead of Raheem Sterling. Now, the commentary might have spun it the way they wanted to, but trust me, I'm a Chelsea fan. I'm at a lot of matches. The boos were for Pochettino, not for Chukameka coming on, and they weren't for Mikhailo Mudrik. They were for Pochettino because the fans felt that Sterling should have been subbed off ages ago, ages ago, not just in that moment there. Um, he doesn't get subbed off. And Mudrick gets subbed off. And do you know what? Mudrick had been a little bit quieter. But why had he been quieter? Because after doing well and looking lively in the first half, in the 10, he had been moved out to the left-hand side where he is secluded again. Listen, I rate Kukaran, man. I think he's uh, I think he's good. And it might nullify this point a, a bit, the fact that he scored a goal today. But he's not the most attacking. He's not the most creative. If, uh, if, you know, if Mudrick was on the same side as Gusto, you'd imagine he'd have a lot more success on the flank. But at the moment, he's playing best in the 10, really. So, but who's in the 10? Raheem Sterling. Because Pochettino's moved him over into the 10. So instead of having the, the balls and the guts to go, do you know what? You're having a fucking hour here, mate. I've got to bring you off because you might cost me my job in a minute. You, you end up going, do you know what? What I'll do is I'll accommodate him and I'll move him into the 10. Pathetic. Pathetic from Pochettino there. 85th minute, only 80 minutes later than it should have been. Raheem Sterling is finally subbed off. It's a few claps from the crowd, but mostly boos, to be honest. And Madueke, a man who I would have I would have sort of said that should have started ahead of Raheem Sterling in this match. Um, he's brought on two all, still to score. 91st minute, the young English talent shows its class here, with Gallagher, Palmer and Carney Chukwemeka all being involved in a delicious little pattern of play, lovely little pattern of play here. Gallagher finds Jackson, Jackson's near the edge of the box, he puts it onto Carney, right? Carney plays the one-two, and unlike, I don't know, Sterling, for example, when you see him try and do it, the give-and-go is pathetic from Sterling when he tries to do it, he doesn't even really try. Carney does it the way it should be done. Gives it, goes. But now you're relying on Cole Palmer, and he's got his back to goal. What's he do? <laughs> through the legs. Well, through the legs, back heel. He back heels it. It's Carnage Chukameka. Slides it in, bottom corner. 3-2. He has saved Pochettino big time in that one. 98 minutes. Madueke scores an absolute beauty of a goal. Flip-flop in his way out of about 107 Leicester players. And just absolutely rifles one up, down. Did it get a deflection? I don't know. I don't really care because it was an absolute beauty. And you know what that goal made me realise? Madueke, Carney Chukameka, Nicholas Jackson, Cole Palmer, Mikhailo Mudrik. Five. Five attacking players who are all better than Raheem Sterling right now. And, and probably if Pochettino is picking the team, which he is, he'll pick Raheem Sterling in front of all of those. So, yeah. Listen, we win 4-2. It sounds like I'm being very negative here, but I just need to be seeing more than that. Like, there was a point, right, sort of 20, 30 minutes into the game when I'm looking at that game and I'm thinking I'd be disappointed if we don't get six here. Like, Leicester were piss poor. Uh, they weren't no good. And we showed a, 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 such a common trait that we're showing of allowing teams back into a game, not having the the mental strength to be able to sh shut off and close off a game. And it's just so concerning that we do that, you know. It's really, really um, something that I don't think you can only credit to the youth of the team and the age of the players. Because let's be honest, if we're going on like this season, the players that have let us down a few times, I hate to say it, but Thiago Silva's let us down a few times. He's the oldest player in the squad. Who's the second oldest? Raheem Sterling. He's let us down multiple times. Who scored the own goal today? Axel de Sassi, 25, which isn't old, but for our squad that is. Who else was fucking piss poor? Robert Sanchez, 25. Not old for our, our squad, sorry, it is. So, yeah, man, we couldn't close it off and we didn't do well there. Another thing we learned, Pochettino's just got this one wrong, man. He just got this one so, so wrong today. And regardless of the fact we won the game, you've got to call him out on it, you know. Starting Raheem Sterling when he's been piss poor of recent, just not a decision that I would have gone with. Not subbing Raheem Sterling off a lot sooner when he was having an absolute fucking horror show. 
actually choosing the option of, oh, let me give this player his redemption in this match rather than doing what's best for the team. No no one, listen, Pochettino has forgot more today about football than I know. What do I know compared to Mauricio Pochettino, a man that has guided Spurs to Champions League football, to a Champions League final, won the league with PSG, who fucking doesn't? Um, but anyone who knows the first thing about football can tell you that Raheem Sterling shouldn't have been on that pitch any longer. Would have been so much better off without him. Anyone who's watched one minute of Chelsea this season would have been able to tell you that Petrovic should have started. He's a fucking goalkeeper. You don't need to rest him. You really don't need to rest him. He's a goalie. He should have been in there and we probably wouldn't have conceded a goal today. I would say that Petrovic would have been positioned better for both goals for us not to have conceded either. So bad, man. Why are you sticking by this whole thing of, oh, in the cup, I'll start Sanchez. Well, what if you get to the final? You're going to fucking start Sanchez in the final. Cost us the game. Mate. And I'll tell you one thing, yeah. Obviously, yeah, Petrovic had come to come to fruition by this point. But if you look earlier on in the cup games when we were progressing at the League Cup, right, you weren't starting Petrovic. You only started him once Sanchez was injured. So now Sanchez isn't injured. Why are you starting Sanchez and, and having Petrovic in there in the league? Just stick with Petrovic. You know what I mean? If there was no Petrovic, do you really think uh, uh, Mauricio Pochettino starting Bergstrom in the cup? Oh, you know, utilise all my goalkeepers. No. Idiot, man. Moving Mudrick over to the left in the second half where you know he doesn't see none of the ball. Okay, you can go, oh, well, Mudrick should be doing more. Okay, but... <laughs> When he's playing in the 10, he's doing well and he's looking creative and looking sharp. Why aren't you just keeping him there, you know? I don't know, man. I really, really don't know. Sterling needs to be taken out of this lineup. He's missing sitters. He's doing so much more bad than he is good, even with an assist today. I just can't be having it, man. I can't be having it. And it can't be good for the morale. Imagine you're a Madawaki, you score today, you know you ain't starting the next match. Imagine you're a Mudrick and you're knowing that Sterling got moved over to the 10 to see more of the ball, even though you were having a decent game because he was having a shocker. You're prioritising redeeming someone who's been playing shit there for someone who's, you know, playing well at the moment. Cole Palmer. Imagine being Cole Palmer and having to look at Sterling and going, you cheeky fucker, taking the ball off me again for a penalty. You know what I mean? It's already bad enough the multiple times you haven't squared it to me when you've gone one-on-one -on -one with a goalkeeper and I'm there ready for a tapping and you have seen your name in the newspapers, in the headlines and thought, oh, yeah, I'm going to go for that. Selfish. Imagine being Cole Palmer and then having to look your manager in the eye and going, mate, you're prioritising this fella over me more or less. And I don't mean in the amount of minutes we play and the amount of starts we have, but why is Mauricio Pochettino not saying to Conor Gallagher, the captain on the pitch at the time, no, 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 Palmer's doing this, Palmer's taking this. Why before a match does Mauricio Pochettino not say Cole Palmer is our penalty taker? And if he doesn't do that, why doesn't he deliver the message on the pitch? Bad, man. Bad, bad, bad. And with the way we play today... Honestly, we better be hoping we get Coventry in the next round. So we get someone decent, and no offence to Coventry, but, you know, barring Middlesbrough, who did, we then turned over, what, by six goals or something in the next leg. We've done well against the championship teams, and we played them in the cup competition so far this season. So no offence to them, but barring Coventry, if we get someone good and we play like that today, <laughs> fuck you know. I don't know, man. I might be really, really negative here. I hate to be, and, 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 and I'm, I'm sounding like I am, and I apologise if I am, because I don't want to be that way. But Mauricio Pochettino was bad today, man. The only, the only redeeming factor for him why he didn't seem so bad is we all watched Raheem Sterling's game, and that was a disaster class. Chelsea are through, man. I'm very, very happy that we're through. Um, and now we've got the international break, and obviously a little bit of time before the next game. Hopefully we can get things uh, get things right and we're showing that actually the personnel's good. The personnel's decent and we've got enough at this moment in time to be able to push on and I think potentially even qualify for Europa Conference League come the end of the season. A couple of good results. Win our game in hand with, what, five points behind Man United? But all that being said, we need a manager who can be stronger, have more courage of his convictions, make better choices in the first first instance you know um yeah Mauricio Pochettino has not done a lot today to prove to me that he's uh he's he's definitively the man for this job I'm a poch out no of course we just won 4-2 we're through to a semi-final at Wembley it's all good man but he needs to be showing me more 
and Raheem Sterling cannot start the next match. People, what do you think? Am I being harsh here? Um, I never asked you at the start of the video, but please subscribe if you're not already. Please smash the like button if you haven't already. And next weekend, for anyone that's interested, I'm uh, on boxing in America, in Nashville, against Baby Hulk, live on the zone. Probably be about 1 a.m., 1.30 UK time, um, Saturday night, Sunday morning, technically. I fly out there Tuesday, so get rid of the jet lag, get in there and absolutely smash this fella's pieces. More than Chelsea have been able to do recently, but it's all good, man. It's all good. People, let me know your thoughts in the comments. I will see you all in the next one.